Hi, I'm Shelly. I'm the founder of WordChuck, and this screencast is going to show you how to get up and running using WordChuck in eight minutes or less. First of all, it's important to understand there are two parts to WordChuck. One is the web app itself, which is where you manage your site's content and translations. And the other is the Ruby gem and rake task that automatically generates your translated and localized locale files for you. Step one is to create your WordChuck account and then select the primary locale. Once you've created your account, the first thing you'll see is the project settings page. Enter your project's name and a URL. And your base locale is set here. You have a couple of options for getting your translations. All of your content is automatically submitted for machine translation when you enter it. If you also want human translations, you have two options. You can invite your own translators to the project, or you can use our professional translators. If you've invited a translator for one of your languages, whenever you enter content, it will be automatically machine translated and sent to your invited human translators for translation. So they'll get an email notification that they have new content waiting, and then they can log in and translate it at any time. I'm going to select Spanish and Russian and French just to get started. I can come back at any time and add or remove languages, so you don't have to worry about having all of your languages selected now. Just go ahead and select a few so you can kind of get a feel for how everything works. I'm going to save my project. Okay, so you can see I'm now ready to start adding content. But first, I'm going to click on people and I'm going to invite a translator so that you guys can see what that looks like. So let's see, and this person is a translator for Estonian, so I'm sending my invitation. You can see that now they're on the project team as the Estonian translator. So I'm going to go back to my content tab, and the first thing I need to do here is add a section. So basically sections are just a way of categorizing your site's content so that it's easier to organize, easier for you to find things. So you can do it however you want to do it. I'm going to go ahead and add a layout section. And this is where I, oops. And this is where I like to keep things like my header content or menu items or the footer stuff, just stuff that's standard throughout the site. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the section that I just created. And you can see I'm now ready to add some content. And here's my form for adding content. So the content key is basically a descriptive identifier for the actual content you're going to enter. In this case, I'm going to be entering the title for my site. So I would enter title as the content key. And then I'm going to go ahead and submit that. And here we can see the content has been created. Uh, you can see all of the languages that I've selected. And if I click on say French, I can see that it's already been machine translated. I can see what the translation is. I can actually edit the translation at this point, And then I can see who last translated it and when. So uh, I'm just going to go back. And you can see we have a couple of other options. Here is my Estonian translator. You can see that it's already been submitted to them. Then my other languages have the machine translation already, but I also have the option to submit them for professional translation. And then you can see the costs associated with that. So underneath the language summary is this little code snippet. And this is what you use to paste in to your view code. So I go to my view code and I find the title content that I just added to my WordChuck project. And I replace it with the code snippet. So this is what the app will use to look up the correct translation when someone goes to your site. I'm going to go back to the site and I'm going to click on the models page so I can show you how to set up models and attributes so that you can also get your active record and active model validation error messages translated. Let's say I have a user model. I'm going to click add and I'm going to add it here. And I'm going to click on my new user model, and I'm going to add a username attribute. The username attribute of my user model has a few validations. It can't be blank, and it must be unique. So I'm going to click Add Message. You can see I've got my user model here. I have my username attribute here. 
and I'm going to select blank. Um, these are the standard Rails message types. And I'm going to type in, please enter a user name. So this is the message that I want people to see when they submit the user form with a blank username. And you can see that this, this has worked exactly the same as what we saw on the contents page. You've got your machine translations already in there, and, and you're pretty much good to go. So now that we have some content and a model set up in there, it's time to get our RubyGem installed so that we can generate our locale files. Okay, so I'm going to go in terminal and I'm going to go to just one of my projects uh, and then do gem install wordchuck. You just need to add the gem to your gem file. So next you want to go to config and initializers and add a new initializer called wordchuck.rb. All you need to do here is add the project key. And you can find your project's API key on the settings page in the WordChuck site. Uh, just scroll down and you'll see it's right here. So just copy and paste that into your initializer. So now that we have everything set up, it's time to run our rake task. So all we have to do is rake WordChuck colon generate. And you can see that it's going through and pulling in my base locale and all of the other locales that I've selected and what it is doing right now is generating your uh, locale files for the simple backend. And that's it. It's done. It's that simple. Go to rails.wordchuck.com for step-by-step -step instructions on how to do things like locale selection, active record, data items, and lots of other things. All of the source code for this demo app is available on GitHub, so it's really helpful to use as a resource. So that's it. Uh, if you have any questions, you can find us on Twitter at WordChuck, or you can email me, Shelly, at WordChuck.com. Thanks for watching, and thanks for checking out WordChuck.